Um, it's uh, very good to be here. I'm so excited to be here presenting about uh, Corian, what we have uh, done so far in the ICT world and in uh, the agriculture sector in Uganda. I'll start by telling you a story about the journey of Corian, where we started from, where we have reached right now, and uh, what we are doing uh, with the farmers in our uh, Uganda. So um, Corian started as a uh, we're around um, five companies, uh, all doing our own work, still in school. I was still in school in my third year doing software engineering. My other partners were also still in school, and some of them were done with uh, their universities, wherever they were. So we were in um, different universities. Now, um, CPM, Fit the Future with the EEA, they organized uh, an event, a youth event that brought together different youth doing work in, um, in agriculture. And so we also came as ICT guys who have developed applications for farmers. But the interesting thing is that these apps were not being used by Ugandan farmers. They were being used by Russian farmers, mm -hmm. by <laughs> Chinese farmers, and we thought we were doing work for Uganda. So when we came for this event, um, sorry to say, Robert, but we thought you are the next ATM machine that maybe will come display what we are doing and get a grant, move on, go and do something else. But uh, that's not what happened. Eight of us, they are displaying what we are doing in a market, giving market information to the farmer, someone showing how to do poultry, uh, another person showing uh, things around production, doing different things in uh, different pieces within uh, the ecosystem. So Robert came back and he's like, who are the ICT guys? The guys who are showing <laughs> these cool things that they do with their uh, phones come to my office and we see what we can do. We thought we were getting money, but there was no money. It's like, go to the field and see what farmers are doing. We went to the field. What were we supposed to do? Sell chemical, sell inputs, and um, start training in agronomy. Someone who has been on their laptop, you know how uh, software engineers are. You be on your laptop, you're developing stuff, but now you have to go deep in the village and talk to this guy in the local language and tell them this is how you're supposed to be doing this before you tell them about how to use your application. So one year down the road, eight that were there are like, ah, no, this is not working for me. Three of them fell off and the five kept moving. There was no money. We were not paying ourselves, but we still had to work. Uh, at that time, we were still called uh, ICT companies. So we didn't have the Aquarian name that we have right now. We would move from uh, one input company to another, and sometimes we would reach like, oh man, the kids have come. Five of them together, and we are introducing ourselves. We are the ICT companies sent here by uh, FTF. We didn't even know what we were doing, but it was a good journey. We were understanding the people within the ecosystem. We got to understand what exactly does the farmer in Uganda need. What does the input company need? What does the insurance company need? And why aren't financial institutions giving farmers loans? There's a financial institution that told us, you go and collect data. We are so excited, we went and collected. We are not even paid for the data that we collected. But we promised farmers, give me your records, I take it to this bank, they are going to give you the loan. But unfortunately, they didn't receive the loan because even the data that we gave the financial institution, I think, didn't work for them. So three years down the road, um, we started uh, sitting at uh, CPM uh, with uh, Robert. We didn't have an office sharing a desk uh, somewhere. Like, <laughs> it was so crowded, but we were still working. And uh, after two years, it's like, move out, go and see what you can do with yourselves. I'm not going to keep with you guys here. So we moved out, we found taxes out, URA, the Uganda Revenue Authority, is knocking for taxes. Um, the employees are asking for salary because you're no longer only founders. We are now 21 staff, so you have to pay people salary. And uh, you're not only going to be developers, because you're working with a smallholder farmer who needs to be explained to why they are using a herbicide. So we ended up employing even agronomists, looking at uh, guys who are into machinery. A company that was only about developing applications is now looking at developing the app that is really human-centered and to make sure that we deliver the service to the farmer. So that is uh, the story about Aquarian and uh, where we are right now. We are still on the journey, and uh, we know that we are going to change the, the way agriculture is being seen in Uganda right now. So let me dive in today uh, in what we are looking at. 
uh, market intermediaries, the use of uh, ICT and information systems. I'll give you an overview of information flow in Uganda to the farmer. Now, before, like uh, 10 years back or around 15 years back, agriculture was about the smallholder farmer. My mother would know that I was actually, I think most of the guys in uh, Africa were educated because of agriculture. My school fees came from my mother growing potatoes. So every time, <coughs> beginning of a uh, term, she would know, I'll go and sell the potatoes, then I pay school fees for Esther, I pay for, for the sister. But right now, Esther, I've gone to the city and I've actually seen the people who buy potatoes. So I'm going to start competing with my mom who has been producing potatoes for 15 years. Remember, my mom is the smallholder farmer who has been doing it. Now, Robert, sorry to use you, sir, but Robert knows everyone in Uganda. <laughs> he, knows, um, he knows who the exporter is. He knows uh, where the ministry is. He knows who is doing what. He's also going to compete with my mom. Of course, he's telling people that you can increase your income because he sees there is money in agriculture. My mother, who was the backbone of agriculture, is now competing with the three of us, with the daughter who, he ed who she educated using her potatoes, and with someone who is telling people, who is training people, you need to do this, I've brought you someone to help you. So it has become like a competitive thing, and she can no longer depend on things that she was receiving before. It's a common knowledge, really the extension system is uh, limited, so you cannot only depend on what the extension worker comes and tells you. And even if you are to get the information from people who buy, they have this mentality. I think Tom talked about it, Robert talked about it. They are coming to cheat me. You're buying from me at uh, $10 and you're selling at $50. They are coming to cheat me. So there's this bit of a mistrust that has been there before. Uh, but right now, what are we looking at? Farmers actually need information. They don't only need information, but they need the knowledge that comes from the information within the ecosystem. Before they were accessing uh, information through these sources, the highest of all being radio. Everyone receives information about radio. At least uh, I think every household in Uganda has a radio. They talk local languages. They'll come and educate people. Then others were receiving information from farmer to farmer. My neighbor is a farmer, he's an extension worker maybe, but he's still giving me what he's doing right now. Now, as, as the trend goes on, we realize that it is dropping. Can I borrow this? I don't know. I want it to go down there, but it's okay. Yeah. So um, if you check here, uh, let me see, the red is in the past. The radio is still high because that is the source of information that they've been using. Continue following the red, telephones were low. People were not using the phones. Because what do I know about using the phone? I can call my daughter in Kampala. She can send me money, maybe, or I can send her an SMS. But as we move on right now, radios are still high, agreed. Because, of course, you look at the behavior change. You don't expect someone to just live like this and start using uh, technology. So radios are still high, but down here is the most interesting part. People are now adapting to using phones that they were not using before. Because when we brought in, when CPM talked about the agent model, they set it up, and then a Korean saw that we have this knowledge in ICT, started training VS about how to use the smartphone, how to access information from the smartphone, and use it to provide services. Even the farmers who had some money are like, why do you have to give this to the agents? Does he have to always come to me to tell me about this? How much does a smartphone cost? The next time I sell my beans, can you take my beans, two bags, and you get me a smartphone? Which is very interesting. So that shows you that it's no longer about, I have a smartphone, I can make a phone call. But they've seen other things that come with using um, the smartphone. So we are seeing an increase. It is still low. Because it is, you have to penetrate, you, you have to look at the behavior change. There's someone you go to and you tell them, do you know you can receive money on uh, your mobile phone? Like, really? Will my money be safe on that mobile phone? What if someone steals it? How are you going to change that, that person's mindset? It takes some time. But still, we know that it is going to keep um, 
going higher. Now, um, we talked about traders knowing what the farmers do not know. This is um, an example of one of the traders. This is at a trader's store, a board showing the prevailing market prices in different markets in Kampala. Now, if you see here, the maize is at 1.7. This is Ugandan shillings at 1.7. But to the farmer, maybe he will buy at 1,400 Ugandan shillings. But the farmer will be okay to sell the maize at 1,400. Why? Because the, sorry, because the trader will come and tell you, I'm selling at 1.7 because I have to come to your home, pick the maize. I'm not going to sell in the bag that you gave to me, or maybe you didn't even give me a bag. I have to start bagging. You see, that is information. I have to transport. I have to clean. I have to bag. I have to make sure that it reaches the exporter, or even I have to look for different markets for you so that you can get a good price. The farmer will be OK selling to the trader at 1.4, and the trader is selling at 1.7. Because now, using that, the four points that I've just given you that come as information is now knowledge to him. And it's like, well, he's not cheating me, but he's catering for some expenses that for me to get better market for this. So this is a, something very interesting that shows that there's transparency now within the market ecosystem. The farmer knows that I'm not selling at the same price as the trader because if I was to go out and look for the market myself, no one would come for my two bags of maize. But if the trader goes to look for market for 100 of us or 1,000 of us, at least we'll get a better market. Um, so about the use of uh, ICT, as I was saying, it is now moving from the traditional trend of I only listen to the radio, and it is moving to people using a smartphone. Some are receiving messages, uh, SMS, on their phones, showing them the market prices, for example. So uh, of course, right now we know that um, the smartphone really doesn't cost so much. The price is dropping, so even more people, we believe, will be getting uh, smartphones on their own to access more information. Um, it's, as, as I was saying, it's not only about the farmer. We've been talking about intermediaries. But we, when we were starting, um, I talked about the history of Akorion. When we were starting, we thought we'd be helping the farmer to know where the market is. But if you know, if you're a farmer and you know where the market is, and the input company does not know where you are, they'll still sell to you the herbicide at a high cost. Yeah. So that means that even you're not making as much profit that you would have made. So th this input company also needs to know where the farmer is. There's a company in Uganda called uh, Balton. I don't know whether some of you have heard of it. But uh, Balton is one of the very good companies that have good inputs. But the main farmers they've been serving are large-scale farmers because they've never understood the behavior of small-scale farmers. And uh, they normally package in this thing of like, if you have like uh, two acres or so, that is when you can come and buy from Balton. And uh, even the farmers know that Balton has very good quality. But when you talk to them about Balton, they're like, ha, ah, man, now that price will I afford? Now me who has only uh, 50 trees of, of coffee, will I afford to buy for that? But uh, there's something that we worked on with uh, CPM, developing the every tree counts, helping the farm understand that Coffee, it's not about the acre that you have, but it's about the number of trees that you have. The farmer got it in his mind and is like, I don't need 50 kilograms of fertilizer, but I can now buy 20 kilograms. Balton started listening to us, and they're like, how many farmers do you have that we can maybe repack for and give them fertilizer? So you see, if, um, if this guy here does not get information about the farmer here, you won't be solving anything. Only touching one part of the ecosystem really doesn't make sense. But if the finance institution, the um, in input company understand what the other party is doing, then the information flow within the whole ecosystem can now improve the gaps that have been there. Um, yeah, see this guy is very happy, but before they were very sad. So, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> So it's a win-win situation for everyone. Uh, it's not only about I am uh, the 
helpless farmer who can't do this, but even the business guys are telling man, man up. You're in business, you're doing agriculture, so even me, now I can give you lower costs for your inputs because I know that you have these many acres that you want to produce. You're not using fertilizer, but you're using uh, maybe only foliar fertilizer, so I won't come back to sell to you. So I won't waste my money in a marketing fertilizer, yet it is not something that, that you need. So um, as Tom was saying in the introduction, Aquarian has developed a platform called the Easy Greek that connects all the players within the ecosystem. We start from uh, profiling the farmer, knowing where the farmer is, what are they producing, what, what are the things around this farmer. As the season goes through, we look at things of production. We are going to talk a little bit about message advisory. Production, crop-specific production. The radio will tell you about how you need to grow your maize very well, how you need to grow your beans very well, but will they tell you how you need to prepare the, the land? Will they tell you how to space your maize? They, they won't have so much time for that. So the app that we have developed gives you information, crop-specific information around extension, and the best of it, it even allows you to order for inputs directly online. So guys who are not ordering before can now order online for inputs, yet they know how they're going to use the inputs. Even for marketplace, now connecting these guys to the market, the market know what is being produced on ground. Even the farmers know what is being demanded on the market. So they're not just producing things when they don't know where to sell. Yeah? Even me, I won't go to tell them that you need to improve the way you grow your maize, yet I'm not telling them where to sell. So it's touching both sides from the beginning up to the end. And then from this, we generate a lot of data that we analyze for different decision makers. So as I was saying, it's not only the finance institution that needs to make the decision, but even the farmer needs to make a decision. Before, when we were starting, they would tell me, what are you doing with uh, your smartphones? These kids, we send them to Kampala, the capital city, and they come back to confuse us, yet they don't know that we are the ones that educated them. Why, so you're telling me with your smartphone I can uh, get seed? Like, yeah, you can get seed with my smartphone. With your smartphone, you can map out my garden and I know my acreage. I'm like, yeah, and the bank needs that before they give you finance. Like, yeah, okay, whatever, you know? So, but recently, um, one guy in Eastern Uganda called us, he's like, so um, I heard you guys were mapping out land for acreage, and then there's this landlord, he normally tells me he's giving me two acres, but I don't think it's two acres. Can you come and map for me my land? It's a farmer calling me to go and map for them the land, yet these are the guys that were saying, you guys are just here to confuse us. So you see, at the level of the farmer, they need to make a decision. If they didn't have this information, they wouldn't be able to make that decision. At the level of um, the master agent or the village agent, he needs to know who are the people who are buying from me uh, services. Maybe if I need to go to the bank and show them this is what I've been doing, the bank can give me money because I can defend the business that I've been doing. So information flow is very important to all players within the value chain. Um, straight to, to uh, advisory. Uh, if when someone comes to talk about extension, people tell you, I don't need your knowledge in Africa, or they'll see there's no need to pay for, for knowledge. You're giving me information. Ah, whatever. So what? So what we have done in um, uh, using ICT for, for message advisory, we have developed an app that shows you the knowledge, what you're supposed to do. But if I advise you on how to control some pests, why don't I tell you where to get the pesticide from? If I tell you where to get the pesticide from, can you order for it directly? So there is embedding of services with the message. So when you embed the service, at least someone will come in and be like, this is something that I can pay for. You're not paying a for, for the for the information they've given you, but you're paying for the input that they've delivered to you. You're happy, and a is also happy. So uh, for message advisory using ICT, if we don't embed services along, 
a small scale farmer won't see any use as to why they should use your solution for the message that you're giving them. So um, I want to play you something uh, here. And uh, I want someone to tell me what they are. Sare, hedi me mango makatari ifune baba nyala kongula mango eh heso blende ya ribe inda iho kumulo ndi koko bi ribe ya bilavi kasori ya heso blende ananje tosa sura school fees tamiz eh musare zindi moze china musare ushiro manyoli hanyo nyika hanyo nyika hamba ha kukuta eh ha eh 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 we ne wanyigile let me first stop it there has any of you understood <laughs> Anyone understood what this guy was saying? You, you just heard the word school fees, right? Did you hear the word school fees or you didn't even hear the word school fees? You didn't understand. So how do you expect to go and train a farmer with uh, uh, your books and showing them that you read this, this is how you're supposed to be doing this? They're semi-literate. They don't understand these things. But if, if I go to Eastern Uganda and I play this video for them, trust me, they'll be <laughs> Because right now, none of you is understanding. <laughs> You're all confused about what is taking place. But when you play this, when the agent goes with their smartphone and they play it for the farmer, they easily relate. Yeah? They relate and what they see, they don't forget. After, they'll come, after seeing this, they'll come and ask, what, how can I go and get what you did? OK, let me just help you guys. This is a video showing soil testing the benefits of soil testing. You're like the farmers right now who, who I'm teaching in English, who don't understand or who can't even read, yeah? So it's showing soil testing. People are not aware of things like soil testing. But this video will show you uh, soil testing, show you the benefits, and even show you where you can get it from. So with the ICT, we're able to do human-centered design. What the farmer wants is what you give them. We don't assume for them. Before, we were assuming for them, and we ended up having Russian farmers using our apps, not Ugandan farmers. But when we do this, we are not assuming for the farmers. And you'll actually go and show them soil testing. Like, we're not interested in soil testing right now. Can you show us weather information? Because they've seen that you can give them a bunch of things, but you have to give them where to do what, where to start from. Um, Yes, um, so finally, I want to touch um, a little bit about crop insurance, using crop insurance and uh, um, uh, finance, using ICT to provide crop insurance and finance to, to smallholder farmers. Very interesting presentations that I've had in uh, the past two days, uh, where someone said a financial institution is into business. The insurance company is into business. So if uh, Tom is a financier here, and he's been having Marcos coming to, to him, telling him, uh, so Tom, I have this business. Maybe Marcos is the owner of McDonald's. I have, <laughs> I have uh, this business. I need a loan for this and this. Marcos will show Tom, this is how I've been trading, OK? I have uh, these many clients that come in by day. I'm spending this much on utility. I have uh, these many employees that I pay. Now, um, Esther comes, and I'm telling Tom, I have uh, this farmer here who needs, uh, who needs finance. Nancy is uh, my smallholder farmer. She comes to Tom, uh, hey, Tom, so I need, I need finance. I need to start doing uh, something for my garden. And Tom asks, OK, fine. Tell me, where have you been spending your money? Uh, well, I bought fertilizer the other day. Uh, how many uh, kilograms of fat? I have the containers at home. I really don't, I don't remember how many, but I have the containers at home I can show you. Tom starts scratching his head, like, OK, I'm listening. And uh, what do you want the money for? I want to go and buy inputs. Or where do you sell your inputs? Uh, uh, where do you sell your produce at the end of the season? I sell to my trader, Robert. I sell to Robert, he buys from me. How many kilograms did you sell to Robert uh, in uh, 2015? I, mm, that time it rained, I got like two basins that are like 50 kilograms. Then the other, so you see, Tom is getting frustrated, yeah? Trust me, he won't think of giving Nancy the loan that he gives to, uh, to Marcos. Same thing as the insurance company. Marcos, the business owner who has a nice car will come and tell Tom, insure my car. 
the farmer who comes with his garden, which he's not sure of, so I'll be like, okay, so what premium rate should I give you? How much have you been spending? But the farmer does not have that. So when the farmer goes to the, to the bank, they don't have uh, production history. They don't have really any collateral that they can show. And Tom will start looking at them as very high risk. He won't even think of giving them the loan at the end of the day. So what we have uh, created is uh, you know, any of you a banker? A banker? Any banker? No, no bankers? Anyone with uh, some finance knowledge? Anyway, that's fine. Uh, so <laughs> so uh, if, if you've been in the finance world or whatever, they, they ask, it's knowing your client. What Tom knows about Marcos is knowing the client. But uh, Nancy, who is supposed to be the client right now, doesn't have these things that Tom was asking. So we have developed something around uh, knowing your client as a farmer. Knowing your client is, the first one is know your farmer. What does Nancy have? She has uh, two gardens. She's been producing coffee and maize, but she has two cows. She has uh, maybe 10 chicken, but that Nancy wouldn't have told Tom because those are things that skip her mind. So we pick this information, know your farmer, get to know their location. She has maybe five kids and she's been paying school fees for three. The other two are out of, uh, out of school, university. They help her pay for the younger kids. They know your enterprise. What is Nancy producing around here? Is it coffee? How is she spending her money? Why is she selling it? At the end of the day, you know the whole season. That shows you the cost of production and how much you're supposed to be selling at. So with this, Nancy will go to Tom now and show him, this is what I'm doing, what? This is what I've been doing. If she has collected it for like two seasons or so, she can defend her business and say, this is what I'm doing. Now that is the best part. She has done what, what Tom has asked her to do. Now Tom asks her, where do you stay, Nancy? Um, I stay like uh, 300 kilometers from here. And how many acres did you say that you have? I have two acres. Tom calculates in his head and he's like, okay, two acres, she needs uh, $200. I need to spend around $120 to process the loan, to do the back and forth. No, it doesn't make business sense to him. And Nancy still doesn't get the loan. So that is where we bring in the intermediaries, okay? So if there's at least someone at a, a higher level who will come and say, I have 500 farmers who are like Nancy. Records are kept. Now the 500 farmers become visible to Tom. They start making business sense to Tom. So all this is collected, the data collected, and gone through maybe a village agent or any other intermediary there can make the farmer visible, and they start accessing loans from her from the finance institution. Because now they've kept, uh, they've kept uh, their records, and now they have someone who can support them. But again, Tom says that, OK, uh, it's good I've known that you have this person who is on top here, but where do you sell your maize? Where is the person who gives you the inputs? So you see, it's the intermediaries is not only about this person standing with the farmer, but everyone who even feeds in. The input company is here. The other person is here. Uh, lastly, as I conclude, um, is something that uh, we are talking to Opportunity Bank in Uganda, and uh, they were coming up with uh, an application called Haraka that looks at social media. Like a person like me, if I want a loan, they look at my social media, they look at uh, my mobile money account, how have I been transacting. So I wondered, if you're doing that, you want to know how my lifestyle is, you want to see where I'm spending my money, and where, I, where I'm getting my money from. Why don't we do it for the farmers as well? I create for you how you know the farmer and you see where they're spending their money. So through ICT and intermediaries, now smallholder farmers are more visible, they can be tracked, and we believe the risk will be reduced for financial institutions. Thank you so much. We have a few minutes for a few questions. Thank you, Esther, for a great presentation. I was actually just wondering about the last thing you mentioned with Know Your Farmer. How have financial institutions been responding 
to that service that you're offering and which kind of financial institutions are you targeting for that work? Okay, uh, so um, financial institutions have been actually interested in uh, the, the bit of uh, knowing your farmer. But again, they say it's not only that that we need. We can know the farmer, but we are interested in the self-data collection. So the self-data collection is being done by where we have like, um, where is uh, this? Yes, where we have the, the easy extension showing where the farmer is transacting from, yeah? So knowing your farmer is supported by self-transaction data, and it is also supported by intermediaries. So we, we don't only look at one part, but you have the know your farmer, you have the intermediaries that they're working with, and then you also have the self-data collection that they've been doing transacting on, uh, on the app. And uh, yes, the other thing was about what kind of uh, financial institutions. So we've been, we've been approached by there are small, small ones like Sarko's village saving groups. We've been approached by those that they want us to digitize for them uh, how the farmers are getting money, how, where they're spending it from. Uh, the microfinance as well. And uh, also the bigger financial institutions are coming in. But uh, the big ones are still, are still few that are coming in. Uh, insurance companies as well, if uh, they can be termed as such, insurance companies also work with the, the farmers that we've been working with because they realize they can actually use that data to create uh, premium, uh, premium rates for the farmers. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot, Esther. So just wondering, uh, as you grow, uh, I think from the, the introduction the brief here, I saw that you have a goal to reach 400,000 farmers. Mm -hmm. So obviously quite interesting uh, as, as you're starting up three years in now. I'm just wondering what your plans are in terms of scaling where you're at now, in terms of users, and also for, uh, for the case of Kenya, for example, I've seen some of the bigger players, uh, the telcos like Safaricom, starting to heavily invest now in digital agriculture platforms. Mm -hmm. I have financial institutions coming and asking, uh, or talking about losing market share to mm -hmm. uh, tech tech firms uh, or fintech firms. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering, are there any um, partnership opportunities opening up? What are the trends like in terms of the private sector, bigger corporations um, in this space? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we, uh, we have currently served uh, 60,000 farmers within uh, the last uh, three years and uh, through 480 village agents that are equipped with uh, smartphones. Now, uh, Safaricom is doing really great work in, uh, in um, uh, Kenya and uh, some of such people have approached us in Uganda because there's an extent to which they can go. They'll go to like specific things, but there are other things that uh, they see partnerships, potential partnerships. There's, now we are an ag tech company. You find another person who is an aggregator, fintech, yeah? And what they want is to link into payments. Something that we've learned is that you can't do everything in a tech, but you can rely on, uh, on partnerships as well. So we have created partnerships in um, banks, fintech, people who are creating payment uh, systems, in uh, even uh, mobile uh, uh, network providers, the MNOs as well. We have created partnerships there so that we can have something stronger going down to the farmer. Moving forward, scaling out, uh, we, we want to use this platform to reach an extent of we can create credit scores for the financial institution. In five years or six years, maybe we'll also be a competitor to, to the financial institutions. You never know. So that is where we are moving. And right now we are in Uganda, but we're planning to scale out to other countries within the neighborhood. One more, one more, thank you. What is the profile of your village agents in terms of you know age, gender? And uh, how did you find people who are uh, new ICT and ag? Okay. Okay. Um, profile of a village agent uh, in terms of age, the 480 that we have right now, around 70% of them are youth. 
we started with uh, many of them being uh, uh, older guys who had the money, but they realized they couldn't cope up with, uh, with the tech. In Africa, they normally say that if you want your parent to listen to you, show them a smartphone. They'll sit calmly and listen to you. <laughs> but otherwise, they'll always tell you, uh-uh, no, no, no. But when you bring a smartphone, they'll listen to you. So from the agents that we had before, some were older. But as we, we went on, they started now bringing in their sons, their daughters, and then there are other people that come from uh, the side and like, can I also be part of, uh, of this network? So 70% of them are, are youth, around uh, like 20, 28% of them are women. That comes with the, the cultural norms around and uh, a few services that they can also provide. All right. 